If you were to zoom way in to an individual crystal structure, you'd find that not all slip uh, directions are equally as likely. Some are more likely than others. That's because there's something called slip systems that exist in a material, which are your lowest energy ways of getting deformation to occur. Let's draw an FCC crystal to describe what I mean. If we start with the cube, okay? Now we're going to draw our atoms. What we're looking for in a slip system is the highest planar density plane, and then within that plane, the highest linear density direction. Those will constitute a slip system. So in this system, what's the highest planar density plane? Well, we talked about this in a previous chapter, but it's actually this 1, 1, 1 plane. It's the one that connects like this in the crystal. So all the planes that are crystallographically identical to that plane are going to be the ones that are your higher, highest planar density. Let's take a look at that one. What does it look like in terms of atomic arrangements on that plane? Well, you've got atoms here, you've got atoms here. So that's it. It is very dense. You could calculate the density of this. You'd have to figure out the area of that triangle and then figure out how many total atoms you're intersecting. But it's a high planar density plane. Now in that plane, what's your highest linear density directions? Well, it's going to be right along these edges of the triangle. In these different directions, those are your highest linear density directions, right? So taken together, if we could count up all of those directions in the crystal, we could count how many slip systems the FCC crystal has, right? Well, what are those? There are these ones on this face right there. So if a cube has six faces and there is you know, two diagonals per face, then there is 2 times 6, 12. The FCC crystal would have 12 slip systems. And again, that's because you've got six faces and two directions per face, okay? So you end up with 12, right? Um, you could do the same thing with BCC. You could count how many BCC has or FCP. And what you'll find is that BCC and, F and HCP and FCC have different numbers of slip systems. In fact, HCP only has three or six. It's along the basal plane, right? These atoms are located along this basal plane where you have your atoms located like this. You basically get your slip systems in these directions. And since it only has three or six, depending on how you count these, it is fewer slip systems than FCC. Therefore, which one do you think would be more brittle? It's going to be HCP. HCP metals are much more brittle than FCC or BCC crystals because it has fewer slip systems. So when you go to strain this thing, it's just fewer combinations of the ways the atoms can move in order to make it actually slide past one another. Okay, And therefore, they end up being more brittle. Now, what do we mean slide past each other? Um, take a look at this. If you were to strain this thing, literally these atoms here and these atoms over here have to slide past one another. So as they slide past one another, we know that there's going to be an activation energy, right? If you were to plot it, it would look like this, right? The energy as a function of distance x, right? It's going to start out at some low point, and you're going to have to overcome an activation energy and then get to another point. So by the time that you've shifted, let's call this distance x, right? Or x1, let's call that distance. By the time you go from there to there, you've gone x1 distance, so this is x0, um, it's gone back to normal. As soon as you shift it past that point, it's gone back to normal. But in the process of, sh of sliding these atoms past each other, you will have to go through an intermediate state that is higher energy. But fortunately, in FCC systems, that's not a big activation energy. Therefore, these tend to be really ductile crystals.